guys, welcome back to the channel. So tonight we're going to be tackling another whistle tender, but something a little bit different this time. Uh, this is going to be the tin type whistle tender. Uh, this particular one, I believe, which is a 6654W. Uh, I believe this one came with the 1655 locomotive, according to Tandem and Associates. I'm not 100% about that. I can write it down in the uh, description and of what this tender actually came with. Uh, but this one picked up at one of the local train shows and I always wanted one of these. And what I really like is that the whistle box inside, it's the um, white metal or the cast uh, whistle box. It's not the plastic one. And I find these ones particularly loud, which I really like. They have a little bit of a different sound than the plastic whistle boxes do. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack this one open, have a look inside, make sure everything's good before we throw this on the track and give her a test. Okay, so we have our tin type a whistle tender on the bench and we're ready to take this apart, have a look at the inside, see what we need to fix. If we need to resolder anything, uh, I can already see that the insulation is really dry and brittle on this. In fact, if I bend the wire at all, the insulation just cracks, right? So we're gonna take the top cover off here, get inside and see what we're dealing with. Now, this particular one, since there's no screws holding this down, what's actually doing it are these metal tabs here and as you can see they're this one's kind of twisted some of them are folded over onto the uh folded over is what i'm trying to say um so you got to be real careful with these because this could very easily break when you're bending it back so what i found works really well and this was a tip from another youtuber was to heat the metal up first and then bend it so it softens it up it's not going to be so brittle it's going to bend much easier and it is not going to break like i said we're going to get the uh, soldering iron on here heat up these tabs bend them with the needle nose and then we'll take this cover off and have a look inside So that's all done. I should be able to lift this off now. Make sure they're all free. Yeah. They're also a little bit rusty. So I might have to give it a little bit of persuasion. I think a little bit of rust was holding this one together too, which is usually the case. There we go. Okay, so there is our cover off with all the tabs intact. Now we can see what we've got in here. So this has clearly been worked on already. Here is the original wire still, and this is a replacement one. And that one is still in good shape, but I'm gonna replace them both anyway. But looking at the, the whistle itself, or the, the components, it's, I see a little bit of corrosion here. Definitely some corrosion starting on the whistle itself. So a good cleaning wouldn't hurt this at all anyways. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to unsolder those wires first and get them off of there. Okay, so next to get this whole whistle box off, there's two screws at the bottom. They are usually flat heads. So we're going to take them out right now. And of course, we get our handy magnetic tray to drop the screws into so we do not lose them. There we go. And there is our unit freed. So this is quite a mess in here. Definitely rust, as you can see, as you'd expect. 
Someone's already been in here to replace these clips as well. So I don't know if I have any originals left, but I will definitely be looking through my parts bin. And when I have to re-solder to these terminals on the trucks, I actually prefer to take the wheels off instead of trying to monkey around getting a, a soldering iron in there and holding this and turning that and twisting. Just take the truck off. It's a lot easier. Okay, so we're just going to put that off to the side for now. And I want to have a look at the whistle unit itself. So I can already see that there's uh, some oxidization on here, a little bit of green starting on the copper plates. So I'm going to start right away with a little bit of cleaning on this. And the first thing I think I'm going to do is the relay itself. And I think I might just unsolder this wire as well. Let's take the relay apart. And again, keeping an eye on what screw came from where. We can have a look here at this relay. And that contact inside there looks dirty. So some of the things you want to take a look at, obviously, are the wires themselves. Make sure everything's soldered up. But in between here, you want to make sure this is clean. Because this, when the relay is activated and this closes, it starts the whistle. And if this is too dirty, nothing happens. So a good way to get to that is to take this whole thing off by removing this screw. And before you do that, what I find is a really handy thing to do is get yourself a clothespin. And you can keep the either take a picture of it as it is to remember the stacking order of this thing because it is in one, two, three, four, five, six separate pieces once you pull this screw out. And an easy way to not mess anything up, separate it, get the clothespin on, and just hold it there. Okay? So that is going to hold that in place. And to take this bottom off, it has two little tabs sticking up. I don't know if you can see them, if the camera can focus. Yep. So what I do is I carefully bend one of them back down, back onto itself, like so. And then slide it through and out it comes. Okay. And as you can see here, so the camera will focus on it. This one's not too bad, but there is still some dirt on there. So supporting this with my finger, I'm just going to do a couple wipes with the green scotch pad. And you can already see that coming up. And while we've got it off, I'll support it at the other end, and we're going to get this green off of here. And you can see, just with a dry uh, scouring pad, a couple brushes got that right off. So it's not like it was totally done, totally rotted or anything like that. But now that we've got it clean, we're definitely going to have a strong, good contact. So there we go. Nice and clean. Let's have a look at this next piece. There is some gunk on this. So while it's off, give it a clean as well. Okay, so the bottom of the relay itself, it's got a little bit of buildup of something. So we'll give it a quick once over as well. This, whatever this is back here, I want that off. There we go. And again, none of this is super serious rust. It's all surface stuff. So as you can see, it's already come up really nice. And I'm not rubbing hard at all. In one of these wires, there it is. It's got the green on it. So again, just want to carefully get that off. There is an insulation on this wire, like a 
a spray lacquer, so I don't want to rub too hard. And take that off too, and then cause new problems. But again, they're a little light dusting. Took care of it. So we're all good again. Now there is a little bit of rust here. And that's not going to matter. It's not going to hurt anything. I've seen these in much worse condition. This gray silver part. Um, but it never seems to affect the relay. Maybe if it was completely rotted it would. But this is far from that. So again, just kind of clean up the surface a little bit. Buff it up. There we go. And now I can put this piece back together. So reverse order of how we took it apart. And this time though, I'm going to bend this little tab back up. It's going to act as a bit of a spring. And again, you don't want to, you don't want to move it too. You didn't want to move it too far because you can break this tab off. So just a little push and we're going to send it back through. We're going to send it back through this way. Got to keep remembering to keep this stuff on camera. Let's give it a push and it'll click and that is secure. So now we put this back on and I can tell you if you're not sure it doesn't really matter for this piece, but if you are concerned, you can see the outline of where the block was sitting. So you know the block was on top of this, so it's going to sit like this, right? So we put that through the hole, let it sit on those tabs, and we're good to go there. So that's all set up. While this is out, let's have a look at this terminal here. And that one is a little bit dirty. So again, scotch pad, a little bit of support. Just a very, very, very light wipe. And we're in business. As you can see, it's brought it up nice and shiny again. So this dropped off. So let's put that back on. Set it up like that. And so at the back of these, you can see there's some notches in here. And those notches will fit over those raised areas. And you'll kind of feel it settle into place. The screw also will kind of help you will help guide you to get it into the right position. So there we go. That's all set up. That's all clean and ready to go. The solder joints are good. Everything is nice and tight. So the relay is done. We can put that off to the side. Now we can have a look at the actual whistle box itself. So again, a little bit of corrosion starting, but these are really old tenders, so you have to expect that. Just give it a quick buff. It's not really going to make a whole lot of difference other than aesthetics, I suppose. But again, while you got it apart, why not, right? So here's the trick with these, though. You can only do so much cleaning with them. And let's start first by taking this cover off. There we go. And, and be careful because this wire is still attached here. You don't want it to break off because it is actually on the coil. So there we go. Pull out the brush. They're not that bad. I've seen considerably worse. The plate on this still looks good too. So that's a good start. I'm happy about that. So that's not going to take much to buff up. And there we go. That one's ready to go. Oh, and as you can see, metal, not plastic. Which means there's one thing I can't do with this one that I do with the others. So there is inevitably dust stuck in these chambers in the box. There's all these openings in here. 
Um, but the one thing I cannot do is take this piece out because it's riveted here and here through the body. So it is not coming apart. You can pop these rivets out. I've done it before. It is not easy to do. It is a real pain in the neck. What I've done with the plastic ones is I can disassemble this a bit and then run some water through this. Do not run water through this <clears throat> type because if you can see it here, this little line, this is a paper gasket that's sealing the lid to the box. If you run water through this, first of all, it's metal, it's gonna rust it. Second of all, the water is gonna deteriorate this gasket and it's gonna be mush and then it is not gonna work at all. So you just kinda of have to take it as it is and hope that the thing's not full of spider eggs and dead bugs and stuff like that. Um, one other thing you should do with this is make sure that the propeller does spin freely, that it's not jammed up at all. And while we have it on this side, you definitely want to put some oil down on this bearing because that bearing, this shaft rides on, so it needs to be lubricated. And seeing as the rest of this is bone dry, I'm pretty sure that there's no oil left in there. There we go. And give this a spin by hand. Kind of work that oil in. There we go. Give it another shot for good measure. I am confident that that is good now. Just going to wipe off any of the excess that might be there. And we can have a look at this now, the cover. And again, just like with the locomotives, grab a Q-tip. Just give it a quick little shot of the contact cleaner. And work this in the hole here. Before we put these brushes back in, let's just give them a quick wipe again with the scotch pad. But again, they look fairly new. This thing might have been replaced on fairly recently. So there we go. Insert the brush back in there. And I'm going to drop just a tiny bit of oil down on this shaft as well. I don't want to put too much because I don't want oil to go onto those copper plates. So let's put this back together, like so. Get our three little screws, put them back in. Here we go. So that is together. Now we can put our relay back on. So that is this screw here with its lock washer. Put the screw in first so we can line everything up. Let's give it a tighten. And we are good to go there. So we've got this connection to put back over here. So that's all hooked up. And now I'm going to get some new wires to put back onto that connector there. We'll use the old wires to measure the lengths we need. There we go. There we go. And I like to put it in this way. This way the insulation the insulation from the wire rests on the frame of the truck and not a not a bare piece of wire so it doesn't short anything out 
There we go. And so we can keep track of which truck came from which end. Not that it really matters on this one too much. I do one at a time. I'm going to see if I actually have the proper clip for that. So I do have one. I borrowed it from this pickup roller. These are all the same clips. So I'm going to throw this one on. There we go. And that side is done. Now, get this side off. Trying not to scratch the rust. And there we are. Put this one back now, too. We've got our whistle all cleaned and ready to go, and now we just have to mount it back. So what we're doing is we're lining up these two screw holes here with these two holes right there. Okay, so that's tacked down. Now, we are going to run the wires through. I'm going to put them both through the same hole here so they can both reach this side. There we go. Okay, guys, so we have our 6654W whistle tender that we have just connected all of its wires. We've cleaned the uh, commutator armature, lubricated everything, and now we're going to put it on the track and give it its first test. So we're going to apply a bit of power now. And then go over. And what do we got? Beautiful. Nice and clean. Working just like it should. I'm going to put the lid back on it and let's send her around and see her in action. So there we have it guys, we've got the 6654W whistle tender and over on the other side here we've got the 221W whistle tender, uh, both operating fine as you can hear and I'm glad to add them to the fleet. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch this, I really appreciate all of the viewers and subscribers and the comments coming in. It's awesome. Thank you so much for your support, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care, guys.